Welcome back to the bonus levels, which are different from the secret levels, because the secret levels were much more well hidden. Going into deep space, I think we could use a companion. Tilting towards, or tilting the remote forwards rather, is always one of the most awkward, um, awkward ways to have to tilt the stage in this game, and I think it only really happens about five times in total, two of them here. It sets the tone for the space levels quite nicely. The level design is pretty similar to, uh, to, uh, Night Town in a lot of ways. It's a lot of, uh... Uh, narrow tight ropes with few, if any, walls at all. And lava. Let's not find out what happens if we touch them. It's actually how you get to the super secret stages, which is why I don't want to show it just yet, obviously. This uh, dog blob doesn't control any different from the other animals, obviously, which makes it a nice, uh, a nice easy way to kind of dive into these stages. This level kind of wraps around itself uh, pretty nicely. Something that I never point out, but you might be able to notice, is that when balls are falling down those vertical tubes, if they happen to be touching the sides, just as a because of the way the physics system works out, even if the the you know, stage is pretty much flat, if they're touching the side, they kind of stick to it and just roll slowly down instead of actually dropping down. See how at the end I just kind of dropped like a rock. A space station, well... No, not Saturn. If we're on a space station, we need something to occupy ourselves with, something to pass the time. A soccer ball should do nicely. Even though it's called a normal ball, off to a fantastic start. The soccer ball, I think, is actually one of the hardest balls in the entire game, for some reason. Every time I use it, I have a lot of trouble just moving it around what seems to be fairly basic uh, parts of the levels. It kind of su is surprisingly quick to get going, which is why on mostly any angled surface it can suddenly get away from you, which is why I'm having trouble with this uh, slight dip in the course here. Not not two, two feet into the course, but beyond that, I don't know, something about it is just a little bit more unwieldy than even the basketball, which is almost all the same stats. I like how, uh, even though this level appears to be a lot simpler, it's kind of shorter and you can see the whole thing from the beginning of the level, it's actually quite a bit more challenging. I guess probably uh, part of that would be the placement of walls and just this plot one plays around with uh, angles a lot more than a lot more than the previous level. It's little things like a tiny incline to get onto this horseshoe that made me get nervous and hit the reset button. And then this, that little kind of back and forth uh, set of sort of 
sideways stair step is a... Like, it's a common trick that they do on a few levels, but it always seems to... It's always, uh, like, a tricky thing to get past. When you're using a ball as fast as this, there's really no other option but to just kind of take it slowly, because unless you're careening straight into a wall or a corner right after it, then you've basically got no chance of landing safely on the platforms right after it, which is what's happening here. I can't, see, I can't just rush through it. I don't know what it is, but something about this music makes me think of Paper Mario, and I feel like I can't be the only one. Like, this sounds like it would be not out of place in a Paper Mario game, right? Amazingly, even with all of those falls, I still get the bronze trophy. Well, there's some amazing space near Saturn, I'm sure. Saturn is a lot like the gas tank, it's just even faster and even heavier. Which uh, is actually, I actually don't have much of a problem with it, especially on this level. I've never really had a problem with this level. And as long as you can kind of keep a steady hand, the only times it can be tricky to use Saturn or the galaxy is when you go over a kind of sudden incline or, or descent, rather, like that. The These balls can pick up speed really quickly and... It's really hard to get control back of them uh, once you're once you've gone where you need to. So as long as you don't you know, get really impatient and try to just quickly get to the end of a uh, particularly long stretch, then it's not really that hard to control these at all. Ooh. Something I really like is that even though they could, you know, were in the final levels of the game and they could have chosen to not put any safety rails in, uh, they still chose to put them in certain key points like there, so that they ensure that you could still finish the level with any of the balls, like knowing that the uh, that certain balls have certain quirks about them and will be a lot harder to slow down and so on. This is probably the hardest part of the level and even then it's uh, all right angles so it's really not that bad at all. Right there I had let uh, the ball get away from me for a second because of all those curves. But I regained it and like I said, even even though this is one of the last levels in the game, I've never really had a problem with it. I can pretty comfortably get the gold every time. UFOs? Oh, I've got the perfect ball for this one. It's the lady but oh, I'm kidding. I would say that since I'm now at the end of the game, I qualify as an expert, possibly. If you've been using the kind of non-gimmicky balls like marble, candy, car crunch, and um, I don't know, soccer ball maybe, up to this point, then the UFO actually might not seem too bad. It's more of just kind of an evolution of that. It's just got more points in every stat.
The chief thing that's hard about the UFO is that it's really sensitive to any sort of motion. Even if you think you've got the controller as flat as possible, the UFO is really good at finding a way to start sliding all over the place and it's really hard to get it to stop sliding. When you kind of learn to sort of just wiggle it back and forth a little bit and be very, very uh, still with your hand, it makes a lot of the tighter uh, corners and stuff like that uh, fairly manageable with the UFO. It helps that this level is, uh, isn't very tightrope heavy, it's mostly a lot of uh, fairly open, mostly flat uh, sections of, of geometry. I don't know how those really help the UFO, assuming that this is a UFO, I assume it is because it's big and circular and this whole level is called, never mind. Galaxy? I've got the perfect ball for this one. It's the lady- What? Didn't work the second time? I will be taking my time here. because it is very, very easy to fall off pretty much everywhere in this level. Fortunately, whoa, where are you going? Fortunately, the galaxy is exactly the same as Saturn, so it's still uh, incredibly controllable uh, as long as you're going pretty slowly. And there are there's really no way in the level that you can't, either can't go slowly or are forced to uh, go quickly to kind of make a jump or anything like that. You can take everything at a pretty good pace. In spite of how big the level is, there I actually don't really have too much to uh, really say about it. It's one thing I really, really, really like about it is that it is con almost constantly working forward from the starting position. So you kind of get a constant preview of what is upcoming. Of course, if you ever actually happen to look past the ball at what's ahead of you, then it can cause you to sometimes uh, just fall straight off. This level also has a lot of very difficult to notice uh, angles. Something about the camera angle and the textures all just uh, kind of blend together. For example, that section right there was um, was slightly curved. So if I hadn't sort of pushed through it quickly, I could have easily fallen off. Here's those st sideways stair steps again. Of course, since those are a lot, those ones were a lot less uh, steep, then I was able to just barrel straight through them. You could probably see a little bit here, these two those two circular uh, sections 
what kind of hills. With a ball like Galaxy, it's very easy to, if you aren't ready for it, uh, just fall straight off as you're trying to go straight because suddenly tilting forward is making you go forward and also a little bit to the left. And then trying to correct that makes you oversteer and go straight off the other side. Okay, it's almost impossible to tell, but this semicircle is also on a slight angle. Which is why that just happened. That is one of the hardest parts of the level, getting around that, because you cannot tell unless you're using one of the more advanced balls. Right around four minutes or so is when the fatigue starts to set in in this level. But unless you're speedrunning it, this level does take about four minutes at the very least. Four, four and a half, I think. There's really... I mean, unless you're really good at the game, there's not a whole lot of ways you can speed this whole level up. Oh, I do not like the looks of any of that stuff in the background. I'm kind of going slowly through even these safe straight sections because I feel like if I start tilting my hand too much, I'm going to I suddenly realize how shaky I am. This bit with the lava isn't actually all that much of a problem. It's the bit behind it that I'm really worried about. Like I mentioned in the previous video, ice basically puts you at your at the specific ball's top speed almost immediately. Or at least increases the acceleration drastically. And with the galaxy has a maximum speed rating. So both look at look at both what's happening and also how much I'm actually tilting the controller. When it's uh, when it glows white, it means it's uh, just about level. You can see when I'm on the when I'm at least on the flat surfaces, I basically don't even have to actually consciously tilt it. It's sort of just it feels like an extension of thought at this point. Because when you think about tilting, your hand moves just that tiny little bit that's enough to make it actually make it slide just far enough and with just enough velocity to get over all the hills. This uh, sticky, I'm going to call it jam, because it looks like some jam, is actually really, really hard. Because going straight from almost no movement to ice is actually quite a big, uh, can be a big shock. And not knowing what's ahead of you because of the way the, ca the, the level is viewed in camera makes just that tiny little transition from one surface to the other really, really uh, kind of heart pounding. Another thing I like that you may have uh, seen throughout the level is how there was that tube on the left side of the screen that leads down to the goal. Without realizing it, the goal is always in, like without the player realizing it uh, most of the time, the goal is always in sight so they can always sort of see what they're coming towards. This is the absolute, absolute, absolute hardest uh, part of the entire level. So, let's just go for it. Nailed it. 
Oh. I'm not kidding when I say when I say my heart kind of skipped a beat or seven. Unfortunately, that's just about the last thing that you have to do to complete our black hole adventure. Yeah. Oh, and we have another secret level. Okay. Well then, uh, I guess we'll play this this final secret level. Uh, which balls should we use? We... Oh. Yeah. Um... I'm just... I'm busy right now. Can I call you back in about five minutes? Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Where was I? Okay, okay. We'll use Charlie. Wow. All right. I thought there was a Hudson game that hadn't gotten a cameo yet. You know, for all that I uh, managed to build up Charlie earlier, he's actually not, not too bad. He has almost the exact same stats as the UFO. He's just a little more responsive, which makes it even harder to keep him from moving uh, when you want to just kind of hold him still for a second. It's not to say that he's you know, any particularly easy, he's still quite certainly one of the hardest balls in the game. And it's only really because I had just come off of using those harder balls that I was ready to use him here. But, uh, but it's not like he's some horrible apparition that's going to steal all of our souls or anything remotely close to that, probably. Even the Flashball's uh, standard, uh, its default settings and the settings that speedrunners use are actually even worse than Charlie's. Like, they uh, maxed out on everything but bounce. Because they want to go fast, obviously, so... Charlie is not the hardest, that it, uh, the hardest ball that could be used. This level is kind of a fun playground, helped along by the music. It's, uh, it's not too bad. It's only kind of tricky when you've got a ball like this, but it, other than that, it's sort of just a little, a nice uh, respite from the horrors of the previous level. Nice and short, and only got a few basic challenges in it. I don't actually know if Charlie is a reference to anything in particular. I would assume that maybe it's a reference to something within the Hudson uh, offices, but who knows. Whoops. I completely forgot that there was an exit there. Let's try that again. Whoops. I completely forgot there was an exit there. Let's try again. Hey, there's an exit there. There it is. Total victory.
And there we have it. Until I find out what codes actually work on that code screen, to my knowledge, that is everything that is in Kororinpa. There's also the two-player race mode, but I don't have people to play that with. How am I going to show that off? I really, really like this game. I don't think that there's anything I'm particularly not fond of in the game. Uh, the only problem I have with it is that there's not enough of it. If only they would have released a sequel in 2009 that was basically the exact same game but with more new levels and more environments and a balance board mode and a level editor. Unfortunately, they just made the sequel in 2009 that did all of that and also completely ruined the physics system. But it was still nice that it was able to get a sequel and I really, really just love the tilt the stage mechanic. It's something that I still don't think I've seen in anything, uh, at least on the Wii, since. And it, it's so inventive and it was so much better than the games that it got clumped in with, like Monkey Ball on the Wii and that Mercury game that all came out around the same time. I, I think this has one had a lot more charm to it that uh, just Unfortunately, got the short end of the stick and not that many people found out about it. But it still does exist. And it still is a great game. So, thanks for letting me show it to you. I hope you like it.